So what exactly is all the fuss about prime lenses? What is a prime lens? What can it do for your photography? Should you even consider buying one? In this video, I'm gonna answer all your questions and more, so stick around. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks, and occasionally I do gear reviews as well. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now in this video, I wanna try and answer your questions about prime lenses. We're gonna look at the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens. We're gonna look at the advantages and benefits of maybe using a prime lens. And towards the end of the video, if you're thinking about buying a prime lens, then make sure you stick around because at the end, I've got my recommendations for the best value prime lenses there are. Now, what exactly is a prime lens? Well, I've got a couple here. Here is a Nikon 35mm f1.8 prime lens. And on this Canon camera here, I've got the very popular 50mm f1.8 prime lens, also often known as the Nifty 50. Now the big difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens is with a prime lens, there is no zoom. Now, if you already own a camera, chances are it came with a zoom lens. And a zoom lens is basically a lens that has a variable focal length, or often referred to it as a zoom. For example, here I have the standard kit lens that most people have or start off with. This is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, uh, currently set to 18 millimeters. If this was on a camera and I was able to look through it, this would give me a nice wide view. Now, if I adjust the focal length by turning what is called the zoom ring, I now have the lens set at 55 millimeters. That's the longest focal length. Again, if I was able to look through this lens, this would now give me not such a wide view, but the subject would be closer. That is called zooming in. So basically, if you've got a lens that has two numbers associated with it, then it is a zoom lens. 18 to 55, 70 to 200, and here I have a Canon wide lens. This is a 10 to 18. So a zoom lens is a lens that has an adjustable focal length or focal range. Now a prime lens, of course, is completely different. A prime lens has a fixed focal length. This particular lens is 50 millimeters. So with no zoom, what do you do? Well, if you wanna get closer to your subject, you walk closer. And if you want a wider view, you walk backwards. Now, some people see using a prime lens as being a bit restrictive because of the lack of zoom, but I think a prime lens can actually help make you a better photographer, and here's why. Look, I love zoom lenses. They're great, they're convenient, but they make us a bit lazy because you don't need to go very far. You can stand still and let the lens do the walking, and I think everybody's guilty of this to some extent. You let the lens do the work for you. But with a prime lens, you have to walk a little bit more. You have to walk around your subject. And I actually think this is a great way of learning. It will really help in terms of composition. You'll see things slightly differently because the only way you can change that composition and change that view is to walk backwards or walk closer to your subject. So I think that's a big plus for prime lenses. Other benefits include sharpness sometimes, not always, but sometimes Prime lenses are sharper than their zoom equivalents at the same focal length, simply because if you think about it, a prime lens is designed to be just really good at one thing. This 50 millimeter lens, that's it. It's got no zoom. So it just needs to be really sharp at 50 millimeters. Whereas a zoom lens has to try and give you a sharp um, picture or image through a wide range of focal lengths. So by nature, prime lenses are a bit more simple in their design. And sometimes the edge here is also in terms of sharpness. Another thing to note is they're very compact and light. This is the 50 millimeter lens. If I take the hood off, you can see that it is really a nice, small, compact lens compare this to an 18 to 55, and you'll see it's considerably smaller. So great for walking around the streets, great for travel. And finally, and this is the main reason why people love primes, is prime lenses generally offer a much wider aperture. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about this in just a sec. So this is a great question. Is a prime lens better than a zoom lens? Well, in some ways, 
yes and some ways no. It largely depends on what type of photography you like doing. For example, the big plus of a zoom lens is always going to be the convenience factor. The fact that you can zoom in and out of your subject very easily it makes them great for wildlife photography and sports photography. If I'm taking a picture of my son playing soccer, for example, I'm going to grab a zoom lens because I want to be able to take photos when the action is close to where I'm standing. But if the action moves to the other end of the playing field, I still want to be able to take photos. And you can do that with a zoom lens. Very convenient. Now with a prime lens, you don't have that convenience, you lose the zoom. But with a prime lens, the big positive is the aperture range. With a prime lens, the aperture can open much wider than it can with a telephoto lens. And this means more light down the lens, brighter images, great performance in low light. And this is why prime lenses are very popular with portrait photographers. One of the negatives of using a zoom is that the position of the zoom can affect the aperture. For example, here we have a Canon camera with the kit lens set to 18 millimeters and I've set the aperture to f3.5. This is the widest aperture. But watch what happens as I adjust the focal length and zoom in on my subject. The aperture actually closes down. So with the lens at 55 millimeters, my widest aperture is now f5.6. Now testing this on the streets of Brisbane, I start with the kit lens and carefully adjust the focal length to 50 millimeters. The aperture is now f5.6 and I take image number one. I now swap the kit lens for the 50 millimeter prime. The focal length is of course the same, but now of course I can use a wider aperture of f1.8. Now whilst image 2 looks similar to image 1, it's when you place them side by side that you can see the difference. Because of the wider aperture, the prime lens allows me to blur the background even more. Note how nice the lights look in the background of image 2. This is often referred to as bokeh. So as you can see, the problem with a zoom lens, unless you're buying an expensive professional lens, is always going to be that the zoom has a knock-on effect with the aperture. With any of these three lenses here, the 18-55, the 10-18, or the 70-300, as soon as you zoom in, that aperture drops down to f5.6. Now that is a very small aperture when you compare it to the f1.8 which is available in this prime 50 millimeter lens. So having a wider aperture can affect your photography in two key ways. Number one is that the wider aperture will allow more light to pass down the lens. Now this in turn will mean you can use a faster shutter speed and also you won't have to rely on increasing the ISO which can cause digital noise. So for this reason, prime lenses perform really well in low light situations. Now number two is this. A wide aperture can be used to create a shallow depth of field. Now in layman's terms, a shallow depth of field means that what is behind your subject is out of focus. So nice blurry backgrounds and also nice blurry foregrounds. This is a very popular look with portrait photographers. Now having a lens that has a wide aperture is one way of achieving this look. I've done a separate video all about depth of field. I'll put a link in the description below and also up here so you can check it out. Now there are some great budget prime lenses out there to be had and in a moment I'm going to take you through some of my recommendations but equally there are some prime lenses that are hideously expensive but when it comes to lenses you really do get what you pay for. Pay more money for a lens you're going to get better quality glass, you're going to get better build quality and you're going to get an even wider aperture and that is really important particularly if you're a professional photographer. Now let's take a look at this lens. This is the Canon 50mm f1.8 prime lens. So this is an entry level prime lens often called the Nifty 50. Here in Australia you can pick this up for less than $200. It is a great lens. Now if you want to spend a bit more money for around about $600 you get a better version and the aperture now opens up to f1.4. But if you can stretch to just over $2,000 then you get the pro version. The quality of the glass is amazing. The aperture opens up to f1.2 and the build quality of course is really solid. So you do get what you pay for. But honestly, one of the best lenses out there in terms of value for money is always going to be the Nifty 50. So what lens should I buy is probably one of the questions I get asked the most. If you like taking photos of portraits, people or things that you can get relatively close to, 
then you're really looking at something that has a focal length of about 50 millimeters or maybe 35 millimeters if you want that slightly wider view. I've already talked about the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 Nifty 50, which is a great lens. If you're a Nikon user, there's two versions to choose from. If you choose to go for the D version, which is really good value for money, it is only manual focus. If you want order focus, then look for the 50 millimeter F 1.8 G version. Now, if you're a Canon user and you're looking for a prime lens that gives a slightly wider field of view, then check out the 24 millimeter F 2.8 prime, often known as the pancake lens because it's so small and so compact, really good for street photography. And if you're looking for something with a slightly longer focal length, then Sigma do a really nice 85 millimeter F 1.4 prime, and they do a version that will fit a Canon camera. They do one with the Nikon mount and also one to fit the Sony cameras. Now, if you're thinking of picking up a long telephoto prime lens, maybe for your wildlife or sports photography, then you might want to consider a zoom lens rather than a prime, unless you've got a massive budget, that is. Nikon make a beautiful 300mm f2.8 lens here in Australia, a snip at nine and a half thousand dollars and Canon make a beautiful 400 millimeter f 2.8 aperture prime lens at a bargain seventeen thousand dollars here in Australia strictly for the professionals now the best all-round telephoto zoom in my opinion is this the classic 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens this being the Nikon version it's a beautiful lens it's still not cheap it's over three thousand dollars here in Australia but it's an incredibly sharp lens and I absolutely love it now a couple of days ago I hired the Canon version of this lens and I took it down to the bay here to take some photos of the pelicans So as you can see from the images, the 70 to 200 millimeter telephoto is a really great lens. But this video is more about prime lenses. So let's finish with a small selection of images taken with prime lenses. For more details about any of the lenses that I've talked about in this video, just check out the links below in the description. I've also created a brand new page on my website where I list all the gear that I personally use when I'm taking photos and creating videos for you guys here on YouTube. And again, if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put a link in the description below and I'll pop one up here as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and down below you can leave your comments questions and suggestions. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.